What's up guys, Jordan here from Show Me Vegas. Hey, this weekend marks the unofficial start to summer and you know what that means. It's time for Vegas Summer News and Updates 2024. Hey, before we get started, if you would, do us a favor, look down, see if you're subscribed. If you're not, would you please consider hitting that subscribe button? Believe it or not, a whopping 89.6% of our views come from non-subscribers. And our hope is to keep on growing. Our next goal is 30,000, which we hope to hit by mid-summer. So please, if you would, hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. Also, there have been a lot of questions in the comment section lately asking about Ashton. Never to fear, she's right here, and we will be back in Vegas in less than a month with fresh content featuring both of us. All right, all that out of the way, let's get into it. The biggest happening this summer in Vegas is going to be the closure of the Mirage. Now, we knew this was going to happen sooner or later, but we kind of hoped maybe this wouldn't be a full closure. Well, unfortunately, it is. Hard Rock officials announced this past week that the Mirage will close completely on July 17th, 2024. They're doing this to make way for a total remodel of the building and to make way for the construction of a guitar-shaped tower on the Strip. Now, when they say remodel, they mean total remodel. They're gonna gut this building all the way down basically to the concrete. It will not be recognizable when they're finished except for maybe the exterior, but they are not going to implode the existing building. The original Mirage building will remain. The new guitar tower will house more than 600 suites and will feature another pool area in addition to a totally revamped old pool area. The casino is going to be much larger, the entire property is going to be fresh. And while that part is exciting, it is sad to see the Mirage go. The Mirage opened in 1989 and it was the first of its kind in Las Vegas. It actually ushered in what was known as the Mirage era and that's the Vegas that we all know today. It was built, of course, by Steve Wynn, who pioneered so many innovative properties on the Las Vegas Strip. I put together a while back a documentary-style video about the history of the Mirage, if you want to know more. I'm going to leave a link to that video in the description box down below. Go out there and check that one out. I think you'll enjoy it. Nevertheless, as of July 17th, the Mirage will be no more as we know it. Now, a firm closing time on that date has not been announced just yet, but we do know that the hotel's final occupants will have to check out on July 15th, meaning July 14th, Sunday night, is the last night that you can stay at the Mirage. I'll be there for sure, and I'll be putting together a video for the second time this year about what it's like to stay in a Las Vegas property on its last night of occupancy. This remodel is going to take a very long time. Hard Rock International announced they hope to open the new Hard Rock Las Vegas in May of 2027. So this property is going to be offline for almost three years. Of course, the addition of the Guitar Tower means the volcano is definitely going away. We've known that for a long time. I would assume the last night of operation for the volcano will be on the last night that the hotel is open, either the 15th or 16th. Either way, if you want to see that volcano show one more time, you better go do it now. Other big news in Vegas this summer includes Cosmopolitan's Identity Club finally merging with MGM Rewards July 30th. I know, I know this has been rumored for a long time and they've even set a date before and not gone through with it, but this time it appears that it's actually going to be happening because the company itself has actually come out and said July 30th is the conversion date. Barring another cyber attack, I think it's actually going to happen this time and it's good news if you're an MGM Rewards member. It's not necessarily good news if you're a longtime identity player because I know a lot of people are concerned that MGM is going to quote unquote ruin the Cosmopolitan. Here's a little news flash, MGM Resorts has been running the Cosmopolitan for right at two years now and not a lot has changed. The property does need some renovations but it needed them when MGM took over already. Those might be a little bit more delayed now because MGM Resorts does have a reputation for letting the rooms fall a little bit behind, though not as bad as Caesars Entertainment lets their properties fall behind. And yes, some things are still changing. Holstein's, for example, the popular burger restaurant there at the Cosmo that has been there since it first opened 14 years ago, is closing on July 9th. No word yet on what's going to replace it, but these restaurants are operated by hospitality companies that are independent of the hotel operator. But I digress. Let's get back to MGM Rewards. It takes over on July 30th. The two players clubs, Identity and MGM Rewards, will merge with each other. You will start to see comps through your MGM Rewards account at the Cosmopolitan, and you'll be able to book through that website. No exact details yet on how your identity points are going to convert to MGM Rewards points, but it looks like it's probably going to be on a one-to-one -one basis. Long story short, after July 30th, MGM Rewards will finally have incorporated the Cosmopolitan fully into its operations. 
The arrival of summer means, of course, the arrival of that famous Vegas heat. And get this, this is predicted to be a hotter than usual summer for Las Vegas. If you live in North America, that might not be too surprising to you because they're forecasting that for most of us. But hotter than usual in Vegas hits a little bit differently than it does other places. The city of Las Vegas just recently recorded its first 100 degree temperature of the year. And if you're visiting Vegas anytime between about mid-June and mid-September, you can expect triple digit heat. But just because Vegas summers are oppressively hot doesn't mean there's nothing to do. So let's talk about some of the ways to stay cool in Vegas this summer. Of course, a good pool day is a great way to stay cool in Vegas. And the newest pool just recently opened at the Rio. Okay, maybe not brand new, but much like everything at the Rio these days, it has been remodeled and it actually looks pretty nice. Here I have just a couple of management photos for you, but we did see this new pool on uh, Jaycation on YouTube and the pool actually looked really good. Back before the Rio just totally fell apart, it did have one of the better pool scenes in Vegas and they're trying to bring that back just like the rest of the property. New bars, new furniture, new cabanas, everything is brand new and it looks pretty cool. You can actually get into this pool now, even if you're not a guest. So long as you've joined Rio Rewards, you can get into the pool. You just show your rewards card and they'll let you right in. It looks cool enough that I went over to the website to check out to see what their prices were for daybeds and cabanas and they're quite reasonable. Daybeds as low as $60, cabanas as low as $150 to $175. For a Vegas pool in 2024, those are bargain basement prices. No, they do not appear to be food and beverage minimums, but still, for up to six guests, that's a great deal. Also, on the weekends, Friday through Sunday, they do have an adults-only pool. That's the lagoon pool, the one with the waterfall. That's 21 and up, so you don't have to put up with kids if you don't want to. So if you want to beat the heat this summer at a reasonably priced pool cabana, this might be your ticket. Speaking of pools, dive-in movies at the Cosmopolitan are back once again this summer. Now these take place at the Boulevard Pool, the one right there on the Strip, and they show the movie on the Cosmos Marquee. These take place every Monday night, and you don't have to be a Cosmopolitan guest to attend. Admission for non-guests is $15 or $10 for locals. You can also reserve cabanas and daybeds for this, and I looked at the website for this as well, and it is just a food and beverage minimum. So you can get a cabana at the Boulevard Pool at night for one of these movie nights for just food and beverage. The doors open at 7 p.m. The movie is at 8. You can find a list of the movies on the Cosmopolitan's website, and you can also book there in advance. My pick, Top Gun Maverick on July 1st. If Sunday nights are more your speed, the Cosmo is not the only Vegas property showing movies at the pool this summer, and the other one is pretty unassuming. At Fountain Blue, they're calling it the Oasis Cinema Club, and just like over at Cosmopolitan, doors open at 7, the movie is at 8, and the list of movies looks pretty similar. According to the website, this is for hotel guests and Vegas locals only, and it does appear that you can once again reserve cabanas for this with a food and beverage minimum. I love that both these two properties are doing this because a lot of people have long wanted to go to the pool in Vegas at night, and this is finally your opportunity. Oasis Cinema Club runs until September 1st. So maybe pools aren't your thing, but you're still looking for a way to get out of the Vegas heat this summer. Well, just do anything inside. And that doesn't mean you just have to gamble. Of course, Vegas is famous for its shows and entertainment, but that's not all. In no particular order, things you could do to beat the heat this summer, attend a Las Vegas Aces game. In case you didn't know, they are the two-time defending WNBA champs, and women's basketball is pretty hot right now. Visit a museum. There are some great ones in Las Vegas. My favorite would probably be the Mob Museum. We haven't seen that in a few years. We do have an old video on the channel about our visit there. It's not a very good video, but you can go back and check that one out if you'd like. Another very popular one right now is the Arte Museum. That's in Project 63, just below the uh, Ocean Prime Steakhouse. I've seen that one on a lot of videos and it looks super cool. Ashton and I have not had the chance to go check that one out yet, but you can bet that's on our bucket list. And there's always the Wax Museum, Madame Tussauds at Venetian. Ashton and I did that one on a two for one a few years ago and really enjoyed it. Might have even paid full price. Ride the high roller, that's air conditioned. Go to an ice bar. Grab a Fat Tuesday. Go shopping at the Fashion Show Mall or the Miracle Mile shops or the Caesars Forum shops. All of that's indoor and air conditioned. Don't let the heat keep you away from Vegas in the summertime. It's one of our favorite times to visit. Finally, you can beat the heat by staying inside until night and going outside to watch the fireworks at the plaza downtown. 
The Plaza has announced that they will be doing Fireworks Fridays to kick off every weekend this summer. They started this past Friday, May 24th, and they will run all the way till August 30th. 9.15 p.m. fireworks shows to kick off the weekends. I think it's a great idea. The Plaza always does fireworks shows on the major holidays, 4th of July, New Year's. Pretty cool they're going to be doing this every weekend this summer. The shame of it is they're the ones going to the expense, but the best views are going to be found outside the plaza. Perhaps Legacy Club at Circa, or maybe just any place about a block away. Either way, that's some cool nighttime fun. I know it's not cool in Vegas in the summertime at night, but it is cooler. Look, if you're in Vegas in June, July, or August, you can't be too choosy. Okay, let's talk about new things coming to Vegas. Surprisingly, there's not a ton of new stuff coming to the Strip this summer. Most of it we've talked on prior update videos about, but they are supposedly happening in the calendar summer, so let's talk about them. Gordon Ramsay Burger at the Flamingo. Now, we don't have a specific date, but summer 2024 is their projected opening date. This is going to be in the site of the former bird bar at the Flamingo, so it's going to have an outdoor patio, which is going to be pretty cool. I know a lot of people were sad to see the bird bar go, but this is going to be a nice addition to the Flamingo. A lot of people have said Gordon Ramsay Burger has gone downhill at Planet Hollywood, but the one time we ate it about three years ago, we were very impressed, and the price, quite honestly, wasn't any more expensive than, say, a Bobby's Burgers, and that's considered pretty much fast food because you walk up to the counter and order it. We recently made a video eating at a couple of Gordon Ramsay restaurants in Vegas, and we had a pretty good experience. Check that video out if you'd like, but count us among the many that will try out the new Gordon Ramsay burger at Flamingo when it opens. Hey, speaking of Flamingo, the next new restaurant to open in Vegas is going to be there as well, and that's going to be Pinkies by Vanderpump. This one also still has not announced a firm opening date, but summer 2024 is what we've been getting. This is going to be on the south end of the property next to Cromwell. There used to be a poker room down there, and it's been walled off for a while now. That's where Pinkies is going to be. Once again, I really don't know anything about Lisa Vanderpump, but we have enjoyed both of our visits to her uh, existing properties in Las Vegas, Vanderpump over at Caesars and Vanderpump Opry at Paris. Again, when this opens in summer 2024, we'll be there. As far as shows are concerned, the only major new addition to the show lineup in Las Vegas this summer is going to be Spiegel World's Disco Show at the Link. I've talked about this in past update videos, and this looks awesome. It opens July 27th, and it's going to be upstairs where the old sports book used to be at the Imperial Palace. Now the link. Now, I'm no dancer, but this actually looks pretty awesome. Unlike most shows, you're not even going to have a seat, apparently, at this show. You're going to be on the dance floor. Spiegel World does some pretty cool stuff. We've been fans of every Spiegel World show we've seen so far. If you're not familiar, Spiegel World owns Absinthe. Uh, formerly Opium or OPM over at the Cosmopolitan, which is now gone, and Atomic Saloon at the Venetian. We loved all three shows, and we can't wait for this one. I think it's going to be really cool. In addition to the showroom, there's also going to be a restaurant owned by Spiegel World, kind of like what they did with Super Frico and Opium at uh, Cosmopolitan. Looks really cool. You can go there and eat beforehand, then see the show and make a night out of it. Again, July 27th is opening night for Disco Show at The Link. Alright, speaking of shows, let's finish this video up by talking about artists and residents that have come to and are coming to Vegas in summer 2024. A lot of this kind of sounds like the usual suspects, but there are some new acts. Now, I'm not going to talk about just the one-off shows because that would go far too long. My favorite resource for that is Vegas.com. If you go out there and look at all the performers, you're going to see a full-on list by date of performers in Las Vegas. A lot of times they're just one-time shows at T-Mobile Arena or Allegiant Stadium or something like that. I'm gonna talk mostly about residents and serial shows. And let's start with some that haven't been on here before. The Killers, 10 shows at the Coliseum at Caesars Palace in August. The Killers are a Vegas-based band, so that's pretty cool. Shania Twain, once again, coming back to Planet Hollywood in late May and late August. Carrie Underwood shows in late May and August at Resorts World. That residency is called Reflections. Christina Aguilera, that's a somewhat new one. Three shows in June at the Venetian. Bruno Mars, of course, is going to be back, working off potentially some of that alleged gambling debt at Park MGM, the Dolby Live Theater, June and August. Lady Gaga, also at Park MGM, Dolby Live. Her jazz and piano show is going to be back in June and July. 
Garth Brooks, of course, continuing on at the Coliseum. You cannot take your phone or any kind of camera in for that one. June and July at the Coliseum. Rod Stewart, talk about an old name. Well, July and August at the Coliseum at Caesars Palace. Obviously, somebody is still watching that. Mariah Carey, once again, not exactly up and coming, but July and August at Park MGM. Ongoing at The Sphere is Dead and Company, and The Sphere continues to be a bit of a uh, an unknown. It is really strange that big time residencies have not really materialized for that venue, but one that might be coming in the future is the Zac Brown Band. He mentioned that on a podcast, but then The Sphere kind of declined to, uh, to confirm that residency. We think he's coming. It's probably not going to be in summer, but it probably should be happening sometime this year. And if music is not really your thing, comedy is always prevalent in Vegas. Not just the comedy clubs. Those are great. We've been to Brad Garrett's and we'd love to check out some of the others. But comedy headliners are a big deal in some of the bigger theaters in Las Vegas. This summer, just as a sample, you can see Chris Tucker. Talk about a blast from the past there. Kevin Hart, Taylor Tomlinson, Jerry Seinfeld, Daniel Tosh, Tom Segura, among others. That's just a sampling of some of the headliners in Vegas in summer 2024. Hey, that's it for this one, guys. I'm sure I did not cover everything happening in Vegas this summer, but how could you? Vegas is a great place to visit in the summer, heat or no heat. I highly recommend it. As I said, Ashton and I love to come to Vegas in the summer, and we come at least once, if not twice, every summer. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel, as I mentioned earlier. We're trying to hit that 30,000 subscriber mark sometime this summer, hopefully by midsummer, and then we can set our sights on something higher. 50,000? Who knows? Any way you interact with our videos helps us make that happen. Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. What are you looking forward to this summer in Vegas? When are you coming? Let us know, where are you gonna stay? What are you gonna do? Anyway, that's it for this one, guys. Thanks, as always, for watching. We'll see you in that next video because there's always more for us to show you on Show Me Vegas.